New York City Itinerary One World Observatory One World Trade Center is the seventh tallest building in the world and the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. This skyscraper stands next to the footprints of the original World Trade Center buildings that were destroyed in the 911 terrorist attacks. The One World Observatory which is the observation deck on One World Trade Center, is a great place to take in your first view of New York City. From here, you have awesome views of Manhattan, the Statue of Liberty, Brooklyn, Staten Island, and New Jersey. Plus, by being here early in the day, you get to beat the crowds and have a more pleasant experience. How to visit One World Observatory I recommend buying your tickets online in advance. If you purchase tickets online in advance, you will skip the ticket line but could still wait in line for the elevator to the observatory. You have the option to pay more money to also skip the elevator to the observation deck and the elevator back down to the lobby. You can also purchase skip the line tickets through Get Your Guide a great idea if they are sold out on the official website. Cost Tickets start at $44. Hours Get updated hours here. Getting here One World Trade Center is accessed from the World Trade Center station on the E-Line. The Rector Street station on Line 1. The Fulton Street on Lines 4 and 5 or the Cortland Street Station on Line R. Staten Island Ferry A ride on the Staten Island Ferry is one of New York City's best free things to do. During this ride, you have great views of the Statue of Liberty and the Manhattan skyline. The ferry leaves from the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. Next to Battery Park. Simply get in line and board the next ferry. The ferry is enormous, with multiple decks and inside and outside seating. I recommend taking a seat outside on the back of the ferry. From this point you can watch Manhattan slowly recede as you approach Staten Island. To your left will be the Statue of Liberty. Ferries leave every 30 minutes and are more frequent during rush hour. A one-way trip takes about 25 minutes. You are not permitted to stay on the ferry and ride it round trip. Once you are in Staten Island, exit the ferry, get back in line, and reboard the ferry. We were able to get right back onto the same ferry without having to wait for the next one on a Monday morning in February. The entire round trip ride takes about one hour. Get the full details about the Staten Island ferry on the official website. Spend the afternoon in Soho. Soho is a neighborhood in Manhattan that is home to art galleries, trendy shops, and restaurants. It gets its name from its location south of Houston Street. Spend the afternoon wandering and shopping here. To get to Soho from the Staten Island Ferry Terminal using the subway, walk to the Whitehall Street Station. Take the R Line 4 stations uptown to Prince Street. For dinner, we highly recommend Piccola Cucina Osteria. This tiny restaurant serves traditional Sicilian food. We have eaten in Little Italy many times, but this restaurant is so much better than any place in Little Italy. The food is amazing. It's a small place, so I recommend making a reservation in advance. For dessert, you have two options in the area. Just across the street from Piccola Cucina Osteria is Dominique Ansel Bakery. This bakery has unique desserts, how about trying a cookie baked in the shape of a cup and filled with milk? One block from Piccola Cucina Osteria is Black Tap, a restaurant that is legendary for its gigantic milkshakes topped with cookies, brownies, and even slices of pie. If you want to take a cool food photo on Instagram during your trip to NYC, this is a good place to put on your list.
Expect to wait in line for at least 30 minutes. Art Museums Central Park Rockefeller Center Times Square Walking Distance 4 miles plus Central Park, an additional 2 to 4 miles. Take your pick from four art museums. There are a bunch of fabulous art museums in Manhattan. Spend the morning in the one that sounds the most interesting to you. The Museum of Modern Art The Modern Museum of Art, MoMA, has one of the world's best collections of art from the 18th century to today. See The Starry Night by Van Gogh. The Persistence of Memory by Dolly. And Works of Art by Matisse. Monet. And Picasso. The Metropolitan Museum of Art. The Met is enormous. It's so big that you can measure the size of this museum in acres, 13 acres. Come see one of the best collections of ancient art from all around the world. The Guggenheim Museum. This is another modern art museum. The building, which was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, is also a work of modern art. The Frick Collection. See world-class art by Vermeer, Renoir, and Rembrandt in a beautifully designed residence. Lunch. Where you choose to have lunch depends upon the art museum you visit. If you chose the MoMA, here are two recommendations. Pazzi's Italian Restaurant. This family-owned restaurant has been in business since 1944. Frank Sinatra made this place famous and many other celebrities have dined here. Including Ben Stiller, Tom Hanks, Oprah Winfrey, James Gandolfini, and many more. I recommend the eggplant parmesan. The Black Tap. This restaurant serves craft burgers and beer, but it's famous for its over-the-top milkshakes topped with brownies, cookies, and slices of cake and pie, mentioned under day one as a dessert destination near Soho. If you picked one of the other art museums, explore the area around the museum for lunch spots. Central Park. Central Park is one of the most visited tourist attractions in the world. Therefore a visit to New York City would not be complete without at least a quick stroll through part of the park. Central Park is much more than a tourist destination. For New Yorkers, this is a treasured green space. A spot to lie out in the sun. Go for a run. And take the kids to the playground. Spend part of the afternoon exploring Central Park. You can simply wander through it on your own two feet. Rent bikes and cycle a lap or two through the entire park. Or do something very touristy and go for a horse and carriage ride. There are numerous places to rent bikes just outside of the park. We have the best luck one block south of the park around 5th and 6th Avenue. You can also rent bikes in advance here. Notable spots to visit in Central Park are the Imagine Mosaic at Strawberry Fields. Bow Bridge, one of the most photographed locations in the park. Belvedere Castle. Sheep Meadow. And the Mall. Explore Midtown Manhattan. For the rest of the afternoon. Stroll through Midtown Manhattan. From Central Park. Pop into the plaza. One of the most famous hotels in the world. Then stroll down Fifth Avenue until you get to Estee. Patrick's Cathedral. Top of the Rock Observation Deck or Summit 1 Vanderbilt. Today. Take your pick between two observation decks. Top of the Rock and Summit 1 Vanderbilt. Of the two. Summit 1 Vanderbilt is our favorite. You get one of the best views of Manhattan and it is a very unique experience. With the mirrored rooms and immersive art installations. Top of the Rock is also very nice. But it doesn't beat the view from Summit. For photos of both. 
Check out our guide to NYC's observation decks. If you choose Top of the Rock, the best time to visit it is now, since it is located on top of Rockefeller Center. If you choose Summit 1 Vanderbilt, plan your visit for the end of the day. When you are near Grand Central Terminal, Time your visit an hour before sunset for the best experience. From top of the rock, you get a great view of New York City from Midtown Manhattan. To the north you see Central Park, Harlem, and the Bronx. To the south, you not only get to see the Empire State Building, but you also get to see the towering skyscrapers of the Financial District and one World Trade Center off in the distance. While in the area, you can also take a tour of Rockefeller Center and Radio City Music Hall. Just note, if you do choose to take a tour, you will have to skip most of the activities planned this afternoon. Times Square From Rockefeller Center It's just a five-minute walk to iconic, crowded, Chaotic. Touristy Times Square. This is one of the most famous intersections in the world. Every New Year's Eve, thousands of people gather to watch the ball drop, making this the most famous place in the world to welcome in the new year. During the other 364 days of the year, Times Square is almost as crowded. As street performers put on shows and visitors from around the world gawk at the millions of lights that adorn the neon billboards. It seems like Times Square is always changing. Every year, there are bigger and better billboards, new stores designed to draw visitors in, and crazier street performers on the streets. It is a crowded, overwhelming place, and not everyone enjoys this experience. Take as long, or as little, as you like in this dazzling, gaudy place. Pro Travel Tip If this is your first time in New York City, it's worth seeing Times Square in the daytime and at nighttime. It really is neat to see all lit up at night. New York Public Library and Grand Central Station There are just a few more spots to visit on this very busy afternoon. From Times Square, walk to Bryant Park and the New York Public Library. The library is free and it is worth a quick visit. It's a beautiful building on the inside and has been featured in popular movies such as Ghostbusters, The Day After Tomorrow, and Sex in the City. Rose Reading Room for the NYC Public Library. A few blocks from the library is Grand Central Terminal. This is the largest train station in the world, with 44 train platforms. The main concourse is a gorgeous spot to visit. Walk up the steps to the Apple Store and watch the show as hundreds of people crisscross the main concourse. Inside of Grand Central Terminal is the Grand Central Market. This is a small market, but it is a great place to put together a meal. With fresh fruits, pastas, cheese, and wine. You have the option to assemble a picnic dinner here. Summit 1 Vanderbilt 1 Vanderbilt is the fourth tallest building in Manhattan. On the top three levels of 1 Vanderbilt is Summit, New York City's newest observation deck. The views are spectacular, but Summit 1 Vanderbilt takes the experience to a whole different level. On these three floors is a state-of-the-art, fully immersive experience with art installations, mirrored rooms, glass skyboxes, and a glass elevator. Tickets start at $43 and a visit here typically lasts two hours. In my opinion, the best time to visit Summit 1 Vanderbilt is an hour before sunset. End the day with dinner and drinks. If you like the idea of Japanese food, consider going to Mimosan Ramen and Sake, just a few blocks from Grand Central Terminal and 1 Vanderbilt.
The Statue of Liberty. Ellis Island. The Tenement Museum and a Food Tour. The Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. If it's your first time in New York, the Statue of Liberty is a must see. You can visit just the Statue of Liberty or you can visit the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island together as a round trip excursion from Manhattan. At the Statue of Liberty, you can climb the base of the statue or go all of the way to the crown. Both of these options require advance tickets. And they do sell out. So make sure you book your tickets well in advance. Ellis Island was an immigrant inspection station and approximately 12 million immigrants were processed here between 1905 and 1954. Liberty Island, the location of the Statue of Liberty, and Ellis Island are connected by ferry with Battery Park on Manhattan. The entire visit from Battery Park to Liberty Island and Ellis Island and then back to Battery Park takes about four to six hours. You will take a ferry from Battery Park to Liberty Island. After seeing the Statue of Liberty, catch the next ferry to Ellis Island and tour this island. Then take a ferry back to Battery Park. Pro Travel Tip Tickets tend to sell out in advance. As soon as you know your travel dates, consider booking your Statue of Library tickets. Cost Tickets start at $25. Hours Ferries depart from Battery Park from 9. 30 am to 3. 30 pm. Tenement Museum Now that you learned about what it was like to be an immigrant arriving in the United States, continue the experience with a visit to the Tenement Museum. Located on the Lower East Side, Learn about what it was like to live as an immigrant between the 19th and 21st centuries. To get to the Tenement Museum from Battery Park, walk to the Broad Street Station and take Line J Uptown 4 stations to Delancey Estate slash Essex Estate, 8 minutes. Take a food tour in Manhattan. Little Italy and Chinatown are places that are frequently listed in guidebooks. For years, we loved spending an afternoon wandering through Chinatown or dining at a restaurant in Little Italy. However, in recent years, things have changed. Now, most of the restaurants in Little Italy are mediocre. Overpriced restaurants that are well worth skipping. On our most recent visit to New York, Tim and I stopped into one of these restaurants for a drink and even the wine was mediocre. If you are curious about Little Italy and Chinatown, they are still worth a quick visit. But you should know that there are much better places in New York for quality Italian and Chinese food. A better way to spend the afternoon is to take a food tour in Manhattan. This two-hour walking food tour of Hell's Kitchen gets rave reviews. If you like the idea of combining a walking tour with a food tour of Greenwich Village, I recommend taking a look at this tour. Finally, on this three-hour food tour on the Lower East Side you will sample German, Dutch, Italian, Chinese, and Jewish dishes and hear stories about the immigrants who settled here. Nightlife in Manhattan If you want to go out for drinks, we recommend Death and Company. This speakeasy bar serves amazing craft cocktails. They also sell several cocktail books. We love Cocktail Codex, it's an essential cocktail book if you like to make mixed drinks. Their book called Death and Company. Modern classic cocktails also get stellar reviews. But the recipes call for very specific liquors and infusions. And you would have to have a very well stocked bar to make many of these drinks. Brooklyn. Walking distance. 4 miles. Brooklyn is becoming one of New York City's hot spots to visit. With historic neighborhoods. A fabulous food scene. And some of the best views of the Manhattan skyline. 
This is a great place to add to your New York City itinerary. Since Brooklyn is so large, it's impossible to visit all of it in just one day. With just one day, you can visit the neighborhood of Williamsburg and the areas along the East River. Think of today as a mini food tour combined with some of the best views of Manhattan and the Brooklyn Bridge. Dumbo, New York. The day starts in Williamsburg. A wonderful neighborhood with boutique shops, a variety of restaurants, and the Brooklyn Brewery. Then, take a ferry on the East River to Dumbo and the Brooklyn Bridge. From here, enjoy one of the best views of the Manhattan skyline. Dine on the best pizza in the city. And end with a walk over the iconic Brooklyn Bridge. Get the full details in our article. One perfect day in Brooklyn. Pro travel tip. This Brooklyn day trip works best on a Saturday or Sunday. Both Brooklyn Bowl and the Brooklyn Brewery open midday on the weekend. Versus 6 p.m. during the weekdays. Plus, Midtown Manhattan and the popular touristy sites in New York can be very crowded on the weekends. So Brooklyn makes a nice escape from the crowds. Empire State Building Chelsea Market The High Line and Hudson Yards Walking distance 3 miles, if you include the option to visit Greenwich Village. Empire State Building Start the day with a trip up the Empire State Building. Completed in 1931, this was the tallest building in the world for 40 years until the North Tower of the World Trade Center was completed in 1970. The Empire State Building has been featured in over 250 TV shows and movies and is listed as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. If you don't mind waking up early, you can watch the sunrise from the top of the Empire State Building. Tickets are limited to 100 visitors and need to be purchased in advance. It's pricey, costing $100 per person. And tickets are only available for Friday and Saturday mornings. Cost Standard tickets start at $44 for adults and $38 for children. Hours Very B season. Get updated hours on the official website. Chelsea Market From the Empire State Building Visit Chelsea Market for lunch. The Chelsea Market is food paradise. This is one of our favorite places in Manhattan for lunch. Inside of the market are numerous small restaurants selling food from around the world. Our favorite restaurants are Los Tacos No. 1. The Lobster Place and Takumi Taco. There are also a number of boutique shops if you like to go shopping. How to get to Chelsea Market from the Empire State Building From the Empire State Building It is a three-minute walk to the 34th Street, Herald Square subway station. Take the D-Train, Orange, towards Coney Island. At W4 Street, Washington Square. Transfer to E-Train, Blue, towards Jamaica Center. Exit at 14 Street slash 8 Ave and walk one block to Chelsea Market. This takes 16 minutes. Or Take a taxi Uber Or Lyft Spend an hour or two in Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village was the location of the 60s counterculture movements and the modern LGBT movement. Now The Bohemian days are long gone. Due to rising housing costs and gentrification of the neighborhood, but this is still a wonderful spot to visit. To get the most out of your visit. This walking tour of Greenwich Village sounds amazing. Learn where Jimi Hendrix and Edgar Allan Poe hung out. Where one of Bob Dylan's album covers was photographed. And the rise of gay rights in New York City. The High Line. Mid-afternoon. Walk the High Line to Hudson Yards. This is a public park and elevated walking path that was built on a historic freight line. 
it's free to visit and one of Manhattan's prettiest walks. The High Line starts near the Whitney Museum. But you can also get onto the High Line from Chelsea Market. It takes about 30 minutes to walk from Chelsea Market to Hudson Yards. Hudson Yards. The Vessel. And the Edge. Spend the rest of the day in the ultramodern Hudson Yards. What was once a storage yard and jumble of train tracks has evolved into Manhattan's newest ultramodern neighborhood. The trains and their tracks are still here. But this small city has been built on a state-of-the-art platform that is elevated above the railroad tracks. Glass-plated skyscrapers. A shopping mall. A performing arts theater. And two of Manhattan's very popular attractions. The Vessel and the Edge. Can all be found here. The Vessel. Only the ground level of the vessel can be visited. However, later in 2024, there are plans to reopen the upper levels. The Edge. In 2020, the Edge joined the growing number of observation decks in Manhattan, hovering 100 floors above the city streets. This sky deck offers jaw dropping views over Manhattan. Adding to the thrill is the glass floor, where you can peer down to the city streets far below. The best time to visit the edge is at sunset. These tickets sell out in advance. So make your reservations once you know your dates of travel. If you can't get sunset tickets, you can arrive mid to late afternoon and stick around for sunset. I also recommend checking Get Your Guide because they are an authorized ticket seller for Hudson Yards and they might have availability for your date and time. There is also a new experience. Called City Climb. You wear a harness. Climb up along the edge of the skyscraper. And view New York City from the highest observation deck in the city. This takes two hours and ends with a visit to the edge. We did this in November 2021 and it is awesome. It's definitely the most thrilling view of Manhattan. For more information and photos, click the link below to read our guide to the edge and city climb. Note. City climb ends with a visit to the edge sky deck. The city climb experience takes two hours. If you book one of the last tours of the day, you can end with sunset views from the edge. Cost. Tickets start at $40 for the edge. There is an additional $10 to $20 fee for sunset tickets. For City Climb. Tickets start at $185. Hours. 8 a.m. to midnight. If you want to have dinner in Hudson Yards. Peak restaurant at the edge is pricey, but the views of Manhattan are spectacular. For the best experience. Make a reservation in advance and request a table with a view of the city skyline. We recently had a great lunch at Mercado Little Spain. Estiatorio Milos, Greek food, is one of our favorite restaurants in Manhattan. For more suggestions of places to visit in Chelsea, read our article Best Things to Do in Chelsea and Hudson Yards. More ideas for how to spend your time. Seeing a show on Broadway is a quintessential New York experience. You can book your tickets in advance or buy them the same day through TKTS in Times Square. Watch a baseball game at Yankee Stadium. Visit Luna Park at Coney Island. Take a cruise of New York Harbor. Fly over Manhattan in a helicopter. Or even run in the New York City Marathon. Using the subway. To get around New York City, we recommend using the subway. The New York City subway is functional, but it is dirty, smelly, and in great need of renovation work. It may not be pretty, but it will get you where you need to go cheaply and efficiently. I recommend downloading the NYC subway app on your smartphone, it's free. 
This is the app one used to find routes between destinations. I also recommend purchasing a 7-day unlimited ride metro card. It costs $34 and you can ride the subway an unlimited number of times in 7 days. There is not a 5-day unlimited ride metro card. It costs $3.25 per ride on the metro. If you ride the metro 11 or more times, which you will do on this itinerary, the card pays for itself.